Why should a company in the life science community locate at Illinois Science and Technology Park? So this is a management company that understands the needs of scientists and is willing to work with us to give us what we want in terms of lab facilities, security, amenities. How is lab space different from regular real estate space? Oh my goodness, lab space is so demanding. We need more electricity. We need very precise HVAC. We need a huge number of electrical outlets for the electrical equipment. We need high quality infrastructure for IT because the majority of the scientific equipment now runs on computers. Much of it needs to be connected to the internet. We need three or four sinks in every room. We need the fluorescent lights. We need chemical hoods that are tied into the building maintenance so that they can run constantly without us having to worry about them. The management people and the support people have been so cooperative to us. The time that our ice machine broke and I couldn't get a replacement ice machine and half a dozen experiments were waiting for ice. The scientists are starting, starting to wave their hands and complain, but the building management was able to find a different ice machine on another floor that at that time no one was using. So they plugged it in, started it up, and we had two days of ice from someone else's machine before we were able to get ours fixed. That's the kind of cooperation that I really value from Forest City Management. So why Illinois Science and Technology? The Illinois Science and Technology Park uh, it was, was a great idea of our landlord Forest City. And um, so Forest City originally came from the retail business. So uh, some of you may know, for example, Westfield shopping malls. So what if we would take an industry which is still growing, which is still under a lot of development, such as the biopharmaceutical industry, and built a park, a mall, if you will, around such idea. And that is what the Science and Technology Park is in Illinois. When you go to that campus, you have a very versatile community. You have people from health management organizations to spin-off companies from one of uh, uh, the, the big universities supporting us in that park. And in, in nanotechnology, you have biotech companies, you have service providers, um, you have labs, and, and that really has almost an atmosphere like a think tank, yeah, where you can really grasp that uh, notion, something is happening here on campus. It's an <coughs> in invention mall geared towards <coughs> the life sciences. How has your experience at Illinois Science and Technology Park been different than just renting space? The types of facilities that we deal with here are uh, highly complex. The infrastructure and the buildings needed to maintain all that is uh, exceedingly more demanding than in just a traditional office space. They've been able to take a space and keep it running at a very high level of, of performance and are always accommodating of any requests that the tenants have. When things break, if things go down, they're always very responsive. This, of course, is crucially important uh, in our line of work because if something goes down, we can't continue doing our fundamental research. Why should a company locate in a life science community like Illinois Science and Technology Park? I think the thing that you're going to reap the most benefit from is the interaction and diversity of the campus. It's not all pharmaceutical. There's other, in, there's other uh, aspects to it. It's small molecule, large molecule, uh, diagnostics. Uh, so that interaction and exposure to those things helps most scientists keep a, a, a big picture perspective 
and just research in general. How do your life science communities differ from just running space? Well, first of all, we're more than just about space. Um, our, our goal is to create a community that allows companies to interact within the community, within themselves. What our goal is to have is the full spectrum of companies that are needed from discovery to commercialization of a product. So you have discovery, you have preclinical development, you have product scale up and early stage manufacturing, you have clinical development, and then finally you're going through this regulatory process to get approval by the FDA to get on the market. The development of a life science cluster is, is about these interacting activities between companies, sharing of ideas, um, sometimes when one company is downsizing, another company just might be able to pick up employees, etc. So that proximity plays a, a, is a, a very key role. One company can talk to another company without having to do a national search for a potential supplier of services that they might find right there in the park. One of the issues for early stage companies is continuously is raising money. They can go to one of the more veteran companies and talk about you know, what were your experiences in raising money? How can you, what advice can you give me? Tell me a little bit about this idea of Illinois Science and Technology as an invention mall. What we uh, find as our direct neighbors are uh, companies who have complementary ideas to what we offer as a service. On the other hand, I think it might be interesting for customers as well that they find different services on campus. And when you sit in the cafeteria there and you talk to your peers on, on such campus, there's always an atmosphere where you exchange ideas, where you kick around new concepts and so forth. It helps us to evolve as well and to expand our product and service portfolio. And always something, uh, there's always something new and that we try to offer really cutting edge new technologies there. What can you tell me about a piece of information you got by being a member of this community? In our industry, uh, counterfeiting is a big issue. There are certain markets where you find up to 40-50% of counterfeit drugs in the market. What we got there from a company as they are in the nanoscience uh, basis is that they have little micro or nanoparticles which um, almost uh, send you a certain signal and you can embed such particles into certain containers of your drug or of your tablet and so forth and you can basically get that signal and you know it's an originator product uh, with very simple measures there. If you take these type of ideas, what you find sometimes at the park, and add it to your portfolio, that can be actually a very neat idea. Why would a scientist want to work in a life science park? The three things are, uh, first, diversity. And diversity of um, the people in the facility, their backgrounds, their scientific disciplines. Exposure to that is a big plus. Secondly, there is an entrepreneurial feeling, a scientific uh, atmosphere to the facility. We have, you have some large companies, you have some small companies, you have some uh, contractors uh, and CROs in the facility. And the third is just having the, the um, setting, environmental setting of a, like a collegial type atmosphere. The design of the, the facility, because it was built for scientists, is probably the, the overriding theme. What do you think the impact of opening up the Yellow Line station in downtown Skokie is going to be? I think that would be tremendous, especially for people that commute from the city. We have quite a few employees that commute from uh, in Chicago, and I think that would be a plus.
Why did Estellas choose to locate in Chicago? The U.S. is particularly unusual in having, in having people who are willing to try experimental drugs. When new procedures or new drugs need to be tried, it's not difficult to get healthy Americans who are willing, willing to make an effort for science. Chicago is an excellent location in the United States because of the strong medical facilities, including the several hospitals downtown, the excellent universities and medical schools here, and the well-educated workforce. Educated workforce, of course, provides good employees for Estellas in the U.S. here. An educated workforce is more sympathetic to the goals of medical research. Chicago is a good place for finding experimental subjects. Yes, both in patients who are in need of the drugs and in volunteers to do some of the, the low-level testing of the drugs. I myself have frequently gotten volunteers from Northwestern University to donate blood. At Forest City, how do you measure your success? We measure it in a number of ways, but the most obvious way is growth in square footage. Uh, if a company is growing within the first couple of years and by taking more space, that means that we have been successful in helping them uh, bring to the table the right resources, whether it's financing, local industry connections, national industry connections, international connections, so that they can grow. With each company, we try to sit down with them to understand their potential growth plans. And where we put them in the park, we will not have to disrupt their core business should they need to grow. With life science communities, you have to be very careful because often they're running experiments that may take six months, 12 months. So a move would be totally disruptive to these companies. So we've got to make sure that when we put them into a space, there is potential room for them to grow. What do you look for in recruiting new employees? The first thing we look for is a top 10 percentile in any position that they're in. Let's take R&D, for example we look at the quality of the work that they've done during their PhD if they're a new graduate. If they're in industry, we look at publications that, that they've done, patents that they have. Every uh, PhD level candidate that we interview and bring in uh, is required to do an hour presentation on their work in front of the full panel of our scientists. And we look for people with demonstrated ability to do innovative work so besides being in the top 10%, what other qualities are important? One is a passion for the technology and people who are driven to see the work that they've done make it into the marketplace and ultimately affect the future of the electronics industry. Next is flexibility. We need to be uh, adaptive and responsive to our customers and to the industry needs. Uh, and finally, people who work well in a team. Uh, the team environment, the team aspect is so critical in a startup environment. Working well with others who are geographically separated, who are culturally separated, uh, becomes increasingly important. Why did you choose Illinois Science and Technology Park as the location for your CGMP facility? We have opened up uh, a brand new facility within the Illinois Science and Technology Park here in Skokie, Illinois. And what we do there in three clean room suites is that what you mentioned, CGMP filling. So CGMP is an abbreviation for current good manufacturing practice. You want to ensure that you provide a safe drug, which is aseptically filled, which means it doesn't contain any bacteria or not anything what doesn't belong into the drug substance and into the syringe. 
Fetter is, for example, one of the leaders in the area of restricted area barrier systems, which is um, a kind of a glass wall centered around your filling equipment where you can only get into that filling equipment with gloves that you, are completely, um, that you completely seal off the other environment and you ensure that within the clean room you have 100% a sterile atmosphere there. How do you market this life science community? We work very closely with local universities, particularly Northwestern, University of Illinois, um, other universities in the area. That's at the local level and with the Illinois Biotechnology Association. The second level is at a national level. So we are usually attending the major biotech conferences held in the United States. Finally, there are international biotechnology events in places such as Germany, Israel, Japan, that we participate on on a regular basis as far as city in a very active way. And that's how we also identify companies. Vetter Pharma, for example, is a company we met with and found at the BioEurope meeting in um, Mannheim. So why did Vetter choose to locate at Illinois Science and Technology as opposed to the other choices they had. Chicago had a, uh, the second largest pharmaceutical hub in the United States and at the same time had a vibrant uh, biotechnology community not just in Illinois but in the eight states of the Midwest. They also realized that from Chicago they could get to the East Coast and to the West Coast and back in one day. Getting back and forth between Chicago and Germany was pretty easy. There were multiple different access points for them.